Hello everybody, Mike here at Game from Scratch, and yes, yet another quick and dirty game application, and this time it is Pixelator. What does it do? Well, the image in front of you pretty much shows you exactly what it does. It is for making, uh, taking a, a photograph or a drawing and giving it that pixel art look. Now, yes, technically it's not pixel art because you didn't draw each one by hand, but you can actually come up with some really good results very, very, very quickly. And this actually has some uses for it. Where I could actually foresee using it is taking real world photos of models. For example, if I had a model of an F-15, I could take shots of it from various different angles and then turn it into what looks like some pretty uh, cool pixel art. In fact, I'm gonna try that later on and see how it turns out. But as you can see from this result, here is a somewhat recognizable original image. Here it is run through one set of filters, and then here it is run through a much more pixelated version. Now you might think to yourself, well, I could just do this using my, you know, paint.net or Photoshop or whatever, using a pixelate filter, and to a degree you can, but the results look nowhere near as good. So let's just jump right in. Now first off, it is commercial software. You can download and use a fully functioning version of it uh, as long as you are working on a non-commercial project. So if you're working on something free, uh, you can use it fully capable. Um, and otherwise, it is available for purchase at, so the free version I was talking about here, you do need to, and I, I talked to the developer about this, it seems like a strange thing to me, but you need to download a free license. So the, what you get originally will have a watermark on it. Download the personal version, like again, the only limitation here is that the images are licensed at CC, um, Creative Commons by NC, NC being non-commercial. Um, and here over, if you need to actually use it, uh, you're looking at 35 bucks for commercial use, or you start getting into, if you have a company of 10 or more employees, $70. So not exactly expensive software by any definition of the word. Just head on over here and download it from here. It is available, and this is a new announcement. It was just ported to Linux and Mac OS, so it is now available on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And uh, once you've downloaded it, it's basically a, um, an archive, just open her up. You'll see the files that are available like so. Now, one of the really cool things you'll notice right here is this guy. Uh, there is a command line version of this. So if you have a bunch of images to work with, uh, you can batch them out and run them via command line. So you don't need to run the GUI at all. But for this video, we are going to be using the GUI. So let's fire up the full blown version. This is an electron based app. Um, some people love that, some people hate that, some people don't care or know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, electron is basically a way of bundling HTML5 apps or JavaScript powered apps for distribution. Um, it's kind of like a lightweight browser built in uh, so here is your simple thing. You can see down here, I have the uh, free version installed. You get this little warning down here that to use it for a commercial product, you have to buy a full license. Um, come on over here, or you can drag and drop in the image you wanna use. And I will use a selection of jet images. It gives you a pretty good idea. Um, so here are uh, five different jets. Basically, this is a comparison from Wikipedia of different uh, size jets. And a bit of a spoiler alert, it's actually got saved the settings of what, in my opinion, is the best rendering result to pixel art style. Um, now, what you actually like versus what I like varies greatly, but so you can see here, uh, you can switch with the number of palettes, uh, the, the palette, uh, color palette for the generated image. So if we want more uh, colors in, you really do lose a lot of the pixel art look when you start messing with the color palette, as we'll see in a second. So you see, they start looking a lot more authentic when you add more colors. Then the next thing we do, is change the amount of pixelation that's gonna occur. So this is gonna be a lot more chunky results. So you see they're more jagged, more, and let's drop our color palette back down because color palette is the single thing that ruins the look in my opinion. So you see, you got various different options. We got saturation. Saturation enhance actually comes out a little bit different because I find uh, if I drop saturation, it's more like a grayscale. Whereas when I start bringing it up, it really changes the color up. I'll show you what I mean. So we'll go over the low saturation. You're gonna see, we're gonna switch to almost, again, a grayscale style image, whereas if I start adding saturation to it, um, it's gonna just outright change the colors on it. But if you're going for a specific art style, you can get you know the end result you want. Now next up, we've also got the smoothing factor. It's gonna turn on um, you know, how jaggy the edges are gonna look, like so. And then the number of times to run the iterations. So you see, you can basically run through and get vastly different results very, very quickly. But what you'll find is you can also, once you've got a set that you like, we can also have changed the palette setting that we've got. Uh, but you can come here and I can go open project. And open project is more like open project settings. I'm gonna keep our image loaded, but change our settings here. So this is the settings again that I like the best. 
and then boom, you can see the end result. Now the last ones I'm gonna show you on this one is the stroke or the outside edge, but the lack of a contrasting edge does a very poor job with this. So I'm gonna load in a different jet image. I'm gonna bring in an F-15, for example. And there you see a very well-defined stroke around the outside. And you actually get, that's a pretty solid pixel art looking rendition of, you know, your original image. And don't forget, we're, we've got this zoomed in a whole lot. Um, if we export that guy out, so let's actually show that. So we'll say F15 pixel art. Like so that should have exported it out onto my desktop. Let's go and find that guy right there. So when you zoom it down to like game size, oh, this image viewer doesn't allow me to do it. You get a much better looking result. You know, when it's when it's quite big, it doesn't look that convincing, but when it, you know, it's down to game sprite size, you can actually get some really cool results really quickly. Uh, so anyways, let's flip on back over to our pixelator here, and I will show you the stroke. So stroke is basically controlling the outline. Um, so let's switch that to inside. You'll see immediately a, a pretty uh, massive different, basically it's where the stroke is drawn relative to. And then we've also got uh, sides in, sides out. And these all actually look pretty terrible, so, but I am just gonna show you. Or we can have no stroke at all, which is gonna get rid of the outline completely. All kind of comes down to, again, the art style you're going for. So let's go on back to the outside. I think this one personally looks the best. Now, another thing to be aware of is this, um, uh, I think it was opacity settings here. So when I first rendered this guy, see how we've got this transparent cockpit here? Well, if I set the opacity threshold down quite a bit, oops, I think it was up, sorry. The default is upwards of here, I think. And you'll see you lose it completely. So that is basically uh, gonna control how you know how heavily transparent edges like that are rendered or dealt with. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's about it. It's a uh, pretty straightforward application. Now the cool thing again I mentioned earlier is there is that command line tool. So if you have a batch of images and you wanna do this as part of your build process or you wanna do it to like 50 images all at once, you're gonna probably want, instead of you know bringing them in here, and then the nice thing is, again, you can save your project settings. So if I bring another image in, it is going to render with whatever settings I have here. Uh, so for example, if I bring back uh, Mona, uh, like so, she's immediately going to render with whatever settings I currently have loaded, as you can see there. Um, but you're not gonna wanna do this one by one by one, very frustrating that way. So what you can probably wanna do is come on in here and say show shell command. And you're basically going to see this is the command that you use from the command line to generate with these particular settings. So then you can take this guy out, load it into a batch file, um, you know, mask out the uh, the parameter. So if I do that again, so you know, turn this part right here where we're sending the image in uh, into a a parameter, and you can run this in the script and do a whole directory of things immediately. Um, so definitely can work into a uh, workflow. You can also set you know, your tools up to automatically call that script. Um, so the scriptability does make it a lot more useful to work it into an automated pipeline. Uh, but cool little utility. Uh, you know, it's gonna only appeal to a very certain subset of people, but if you want to get that uh, pixel art look, and especially if you're not a pixel artist, uh, but you have, you know, source images to work from, this is a great place to start. Or another thing you could easily do, for example, is you could capture people or yourself doing a walk cycle, you know, a series of images of you walking, and then turn them into this, you know, pixelate them, and then paint over, clean it up, and use it kind of as a base for your uh, pixel art. So basically you're doing onion skinning in reverse of sorts. So it's definitely a tool that, you know, in some workflows would definitely be useful. And it, again, it goes way beyond just being a, um, you know, a pixelate filter like you can find in just any paint app. And the results are, um, you know, you, you do get a much more pixel app look, a pixel art look out of this, at least in my humble opinion. And that command line tool just really kind of adds to the diversity of the capabilities of this guy. I don't know, it's cool enough, I figured I would share it. So once again, if you are interested in grabbing a hold of this guy, uh, you can grab it and use it completely free at pixelatorapp.com. I will link that down below. And again, if you want to use it commercially, it's from 30 to 70 bucks, depending on how big your company is. So uh, it ain't breaking the bank. Um, so hopefully you found that useful. Um, all right, that's it for now. I will see you all later. Goodbye.